I want to show you step by step how you can set up memory for your copilot, or basically your agent's ability to remember the things you've already talked about, make sure it doesn't repeat itself, and maybe even give you some details about the person that the copilot agent is talking to. It can feel like a super complicated thing, this idea of memory, but we're going to break it down in super simple terms on this video right now. This is bigger than adding a certain knowledge source or connector to your copilot agent. Agents are cool and super powerful tools, but if it feels like to the end user that the agent is maybe repeating itself or that the end user has to repeat themselves, people aren't going to want to use it. Generative AI is super powerful in that it can communicate in a human-like way more than any other piece of technology. But for us, this still leaves some hoops to jump through. And that's kind of what we're talking about today. There will be some screen sharing and showing around Microsoft Copilot Studio, but I also wanted to take some time just to kind of talk about how we can approach this idea of memory with our generative AI agents built on Microsoft Copilot Studio. And so there's a couple of concepts that I want to talk about. These, these three right here. And the first one being understanding variables. And so specifically, what are variables? Much like any data or software things, variables are the means in which information is stored. And if we want to apply this to memory, variables are like the short term memory of your copilot agent. And specifically, you can have variables that are considered topic variables, or you can have variables that are considered global variables. Let me share this right here. So here I am within an agent, pretty much a, a completely fresh agent. But if you're not familiar with what topics are, I would encourage you to, to learn what topics are. But topics, right, are just basically how your agent is broken up. And variables can be in the context of a global variable as in they're, you know, they're outside of topics, they are applied to every topic, they're for your entire copilot agent. Or you can have topic variables, which are variables that apply to one specific part of your agent or one specific topic. And if you go to a topic, you can click on variables here. And it will show you, um, hey, okay, we have some topic variables here. In this agent, we don't have any global variables. We do have some what are called environment variables. Don't worry about that right now. If you're unsure what those are. So really understanding that all your agent is doing is really operating on a bunch of different variables to build its short term memory, so to speak. One thing that's really important to know as well is you can transfer from topic to topic, much like if you're familiar with Power Automates, you can call child flows. Um, you can have a very similar experience with calling other topics all within your agent. And when you do that, you can actually pass topic variables in that sense as well. So just another tool to have at your fingertips and just know that it's there is that you can pass topic variables from topic to topic when you transfer topics, if that makes sense explicitly. Also, I want to something that I think is constantly missed are what are called topic inputs. And these are basically fancy versions of variables. You'll notice here that I'm asking a question in my conversation pane, and this creates a new variable called and I called it respond to customer. But you can also create variables without having questions in what's called your canvas here. And so if you go if you're on a topic and you click on details up here, you'll see input right here. I think this tab and outputs are really hidden, but click on input. Here you can also define variables. And what's really cool about this is these use generative AI to be set. So when I come back to something I said at the beginning, if it feels like your, your user is constantly having to repeat itself, like it gives a customer name and then it asks what's the customer name, you're probably not using topic inputs. You're probably outlining that question in the canvas. And so the agent thinks it should always ask that. But I would challenge you, try using topic inputs as much as you can for your topic variables. I hope that makes sense. Point number two that I wanted to talk about is understanding knowledge sources. And knowledge sources, if we compare it to memory, again, knowledge sources are like your long term memory. Okay, so these are things that you don't necessarily need to remember right away or 
might not necessarily apply to a specific conversation that the co-pilot agent is having, but it's, you know, it's something that it just knows where it can get that information and go and get it. And so that's exactly what knowledge sources are. There's a whole bunch of different sort of knowledge sources you can connect, PDFs, SharePoint sites, um, websites, all, all, all sorts of different things. And there's constantly new types being added, Dataverse or, or any sort of custom connector that you want to add. And so I will say too, here you can set up your knowledge sources under this knowledge tab. I think most people understand this, all right? Here I've added a PDF just for the sake of an example. And if I go back to my topic that I was referring to earlier, you can always tell it when to go and search your knowledge sources by using a generative answers node. And here you can see edit sources. Actually, no, I'm sorry, I'm confused. Here we can see edit sources on this one down here. And this is saying, hey, search that customer communication guide. Um, that's in our knowledge source. It is. Sorry, that's in our knowledge base, as Microsoft would call it. Your knowledge base is made up of several knowledge sources. Something that's also really cool is that I, I did in this one is you can make the general web or internet a knowledge source as well. So enable your agent to search all public websites and information. Say, say I'm asking about a, a client that has a website or maybe it's pretty large and there's a lot of news out on them. This can allow you to search all of those things. So that is pretty cool as well and can be a knowledge source. And again, understanding the difference between a knowledge source and a knowledge and a variable, right? And how those two different pieces serve you as you are building your copilot agents to help set up the memory. I just want to take one quick second and say if there are questions that you have that you don't really feel like I am answering, or you have a particularly nuanced situation or want to get some direct one on one help with me, there is a link down in the description down below that will allow you to get in direct contact with me book a meeting directly on my personal calendar. Do you go ahead and follow that link, you can set that up and I would love to work with you. Continuing on there's one last point I wanted to talk about and this is going to be understanding conditional logic. And so if you have any experience with say power automation, power automate flows or power virtual agents or any sort of low code process thing that follows a process. I think this is a concept that could be fairly simple, but isn't always the most intuitive, in my opinion. And conditional logic is really just if this is true, do this, if not, do that. And you have the ability to really build out almost an infinite possibilities of conditional logic within your copilot agents, specifically within your topics, and specifically within this conversation or map or canvas that Microsoft may call it. And I think that you can use this in a very tasteful way and, and really overuse it in a that would actually hurt your agent. So before I before I share my screen, I, I'll tell you a little story where I was first building a copilot agent, the first one I had built, and I basically outlined a ton of conditional logic and questions that it should ask. Something I was not doing was I was not leaning on the generative AI capabilities. So something just to just to remind just for me to remind you from my personal experience is if it feels like the, the more stuff you add to your canvas, generally the less generative AI you are going to be using, which means the higher likelihood that your agent is, you know, repeating itself or that the end user is having to repeat themselves. So really understanding all the generative AI tools that are out there. But understand there are definitely still times where you need to use conditional logic. And so specifically here, um, I've asked a question. And it's saying, hey, do we need to do you need help writing an email or responding to a message to this customer is our example. And it's just a Boolean field. So it's a yes, no. And if the person says yes, then it searches, you know, it follows a certain action. And, and this can be all built out and, and everything, you know, if there's more actions that needed to happen. Or if they say no, then you know, you can have different things take place, you can have it search different knowledge sources, you can have it do trigger different power automate flows, you can have it send different messages. So just understanding that this is there and to, again, to use it tastefully. Um, something that's really important is to think about when is using conditional logic if a certain variable is blank, 
right? There could be a time where you maybe require a variable. And if it's blank, what needs to happen in that scenario? Or say you're using Power Automate flows, you're connected to a, a Power Automate. What happens if that flow fails? What should happen, right? So building conditional logic into your agent to help safeguard against every scenario is going to help improve what I would consider the memory of your co-pilot agent. Now, there are a lot of concepts that we talked about that I alluded to in this video. If you do not understand everything there is to know about Microsoft Copilot Studio, you're gonna to wanna to check out this playlist here. This is gonna have a list of all of the videos related to Microsoft Copilot Studio on this channel so that you can figure out and get answers to the questions that you have that are really important. Thank you so much for sticking to the end of the video. My name is Griffin Lickfeld, the host of the Citizen Developer channel. I'm excited to connect with you in the next one.